Sophia, and I will be performing as the character Dewada from Speech and Debate by Stephen Carell. It goes a little something like this. Welcome to the first podcast entry of my diary, updated daily at monoblog.com. Let's hear it for my band! Woo! That's Casio in the background. Casio's been programmed to play the only three chords I know. Over and over while I improvise a new song, live for your ears. America, ideally the music would be more interesting, but I can't play and sing at the same time. And I have no friends to help me out. But to water, you're saying to yourselves, you're so odd and frumpy, you must have friends. But no. I don't. All I have is my music. The upcoming auditions for this year's spring musical were the inspiration for this live streaming musical entry. My high school will be doing the timeless classic, Once Upon a Mattress. And this year, like every other year, I will not be cast because of my talentless drama teacher, a man I'll call gay guy with a receding hairline in order to protect Mr. Walter M. Healy's anonymity. But this year, I think America should decide whether or not I get to showcase my skills in North Salem High's multi-purpose room. But to water, you're asking yourselves. How can we show you our undying love? Calm yourselves. I'll tell you. You see, Mr. Hewitt was foolish enough to include his email address in the bottom of his class syllabus. So I say this. Let the e-campaign begin. If you think I should play the lead in the spring play, write to the fool at dramedy at gmail.com. Yes, that's D-R-A-M-E-D-Y at gmail.com. Mr. Healy? This verse is for you. Mr. Healy, you're a crab sandwich. I am pure and you're a crab sandwich. Get some bread, your balding head, and some more bread. You have your head between bread, crab sandwich, yeah. Fierce. I totally improv that. Thank you. Hello, my name is Heather Coates, and I will be performing a monologue from the play Promedy by Wade Bradford. The character which portrays this monologue is Beatrix. That's not true. And women need the prom. It's a rite of passage, as sacred as getting your driver's license or buying your first bra. There are only a few things in life that are guaranteed to be glorious and memorable and sparkling with guns and cummerbunds. Prom is the quintessential teenage experience. Think of the unlucky grown-ups and the elderly who lament the day they decided not to go to the prom. It is a key ingredient to a happy and meaningful life. Prom is short for promenade. A slow, gentle walk through a shady glen. And this beloved ceremony symbolizes our journey from the shadows of adolescence to the bright sunshine of the adult world with all its freedoms. And it may be the only chance I'll ever have to dance with a boy. Maybe I'll never have someone get down on their knee and offer me a diamond ring. Maybe I'll never walk down the aisle with a smug look of bridal triumph. But it is my right and the right of every plain, frumpy, bookwormish, soon-to-be librarian to have one night of Cinderella magic. Even if we have to go with our cousin or our gay best friend from chat class, we will have a prom. Thank you. Hello, my name is Chidinma Ude, and I will be reading a monologue from the play Whoever Said I Was a Good Girl by Gustavo Oat. You don't know what to do then you better learn to do what I do. That's the only way they'll think you're in charge. 
in charge of your people and everyone else too. You should learn to do what I do so they respect you. You'll be in with the people that get shit done. Living is like if life was, I mean, I mean, living is shit. I don't like living as much as, I like other things better than living. Killing. Living for me, it's, that's it. Killing. Let them show some respect when you're sticking a serious piece in their face. That's living. The rest is just fairy tales and TV. What was the first? The first time, like? <laughs> well, I remember mine perfectly. She was my grammar teacher and I was 11. Young Lulu put a sweet little 22 in my hands. It looked like a toy. I never thought I'd have one of those. So I took it to school and if anyone touched me, I stuck it right in their chest. And that day this teacher was sneering at me. She yelled at me in front of the whole class. So I pulled out my 22 and I shot her right through the eye. And then I finished her off with one in the gut. I learned two things. One, no one talks to the cops when they're scared. And two, no one ever suspects 11 year old girls. <laughs> and the rest, the same, they come one after the other, like in a line. One day a bus driver, then a taxi driver, later on some old guy, orders from Lulu friends who need a favor, people who have things I want, or people who pass by when quick draw is catching up with me. Total, zeros. People without a past or story. Zombies, like on TV. They die and there's nothing behind them. I don't know their life anyway and that's enough. They, they, they just show up asking to be killed. Like the woman in the drugstore who wouldn't give me an aspirin. I had a headache, you know? You know what's the best thing you've ever done in your life? I'll tell you. The best thing you've ever done in your life was talk to me. It is. And if anything I've told you sticks in your head, You'll do all right in this life. Scene. My name is Olivia Moskowitz, and I will be doing a monologue titled, That's My Dad. I guess I must have been about eight. I couldn't have been much younger. It was the first time my father took me to a real major league ball game. I guess I must have eaten one too many hot dogs or too many nachos because I suddenly really had to use the bathroom. I wasn't sure my dad would let me go by myself, but we were within one run of tying the game and he didn't want to miss it. I, I was thrilled. I mean, when you're eight, going to the grown-up's bathroom can be a real adventure. Even the sign men's room sparks excitement. But I, I can't help but feel a little hurt that he didn't worry more about me. I mean, can you imagine what kind of weirdos could have been in that bathroom? Anyway, there weren't any weirdos. But when I got out of the bathroom, there was this guy sitting in my seat, this, this total rando, just sitting in my seat and talking to my dad. And my dad had his arm around the guy's shoulder. Not, not in like a weird way, but more in like a guy's bonding way. And they, they were laughing. Um, and my dad used to put his arm around my shoulder like that. 
I was a level up from their seats. That was where the bathroom was. Um, so I could see what was going on before, before they could see me. And I couldn't help but think, you know, who is this guy sitting in my seat? That's my seat. That's my dad. <laughs> I was frozen. Um, I couldn't move. I just, I just stood there and frankly, I thought I'd been replaced. I just wanted to scream at that moment. I just wanted to say, just no, dad. I'll be a better son. Just, I, I want, I want to do whatever it takes. I will do it. <laughs> but, um, I didn't because I was frozen and I was also crying. Anyway, um, this, so this guy, this guy in a blue shirt or something sees me, uh, and tries to figure out what's going on. I couldn't tell him. What, that I was dumped by my dad? No, I couldn't tell him that. So he kind of sees there's the ticket in my hand, pries open my fingers, and then just leads me to the seat. So I get over to the seat, right? And this guy stands up and I can see exactly who it is. So my dad is all like, Lo, look, it's uh, it's Mr. Allen. What do you know? He's a baseball fan, just like you. Mis Mr. Allen was my gym teacher. I've hated gym ever since. So I'm skating, right? And this guy tears out of his shop like I'm the Unabomber or something, right? And he actually tries to shove me off the pavement. He's like, get a job, you punk. I'm, I, who does he think he is? Get a job. I'm not doing anything to you. As far as I can see, this isn't your sidewalk. I was skating here this whole day. I haven't crashed into one person. Get a job. Maybe if you worry less about skaters scaring off his precious customers and more about not selling garbage in the store, he, he wouldn't be going under. Maybe if he, if he, checked his blood pressure once in a while, he, he might live long. I know one thing though, next time he tries to push me off of his suit, he's gonna wish he kept his hands to himself. Get a job. You get one yourself. I mean, he's gonna need one when his lease comes due and his landlord kicks him out to put up a yogurt bar or something. This is the same guy that threatened to ca call the cops on us last week. I wish he did call those cops. You know, like, like, what are they, what are they going to do, arrest us? For what, for wearing big pants? Like, there's no law against skateboards. I, call me a punk. I wish he had called those cops. Because, 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 not like anyone would have come anyways. They're too busy rolling bums and eating donuts to mess with skate punks. That might actually fight back. Because I'll fight back. Skate punks. What's the, what's the deal with that too, skate punks? Just because we skate, that makes us juvenile delinquents? Like, I have a B average in school. I, I've never cut class in my life. I, I don't even sneak into the movies. The movies, like, they don't like the way we dress so they assume we're criminals or something. I took, my, my dad has pictures of himself from the 60s with like long hair and beads and stuff. He looks, he looks like a freak and he's proud of it. And, and, and they're all proud of it. I mean, compared to them, we look normal. Hi, I'm Ikal Justino, and I will be doing a monologue from the play Flowers in the Desert by D.M. Larson. Homeless kids aren't homeless because they want to be. Homeless kids are the ones that aren't wanted. Either their parents died or they left them. Oh, sure, there's foster homes, but they don't really want you either. If they did, why would they keep getting rid of me? I didn't always have a home. I lived on the streets for a while. And surprise, there were lots of kids there with me. People never thought we were homeless, even though we weren't dressed nice. Kids never dress nice anyway. 
And sometimes they'd even give us a five finger discount or something nice from a store. That's how I got caught. I hadn't been out there for very long when they got me. Some kids are out there forever. They learn how to survive. I didn't. They gave me a choice, either come here to Happy Rancher or go to jail. Sarge even came down to visit with me. And he did something most people would never do. He asked me what I wanted. He really wanted to know what he could do to help me for myself. <laughs> oh man, what am I saying? You must think I'm a total dork. <sighs> Real sob story, huh? And I'm working at this, like, group home with Susie Harris. I hang out a lot. <laughs> you know who she is? I think you'd like her. She's a lot of fun. <laughs> she was supposed to come here with me today, but she couldn't make it. Bobby's good. He's working at that garden place in Salem. Sometimes on the weekends. He wishes he could be here too. He's a... A good boyfriend. I think it'll last for us. One of the great... Things. It's just as hard to talk to you now that you can't talk back. I can't ever say the right thing to you. You're just so... Not there, aren't you? You always ignore me. I don't even if you can hear me right now, you're not paying attention. You never. Why don't I matter to you? What do you want from me? Maybe you just want to be left alone. Well, that's what I'll do then. I'm sorry I disturbed your deathbed, you selfish fucking bastard. You self-centered, egotistical, pompous fucking bastard. I don't care what you want. I hope you die. Hope you fucking die real soon. You can fucking rot and be eaten by worms. I hope fucking worms eat you. Worms with big fucking teeth, and rats, and flies, and vultures. I hope vultures dig you up, and take you out of the casket, and fly away with you, you fuck! I miss you. I've always missed you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, Christ. I'm so sorry. Please don't die. Oh, you're so small. Please, Daddy. Hello, my name is Nikki Janunis, and I am going to be doing the monologue Lunchtime from This Is Your Good Man, Charlie Brown. I think lunchtime is about the worst time of day for me. Always having to sit here alone. And when you're alone, the peanut butter sticks to the roof from your sandwich, sticks to the roof of your mouth. Who's <laughs> that cute little redhead girl over there eating her lunch? I wonder what she would do if I went over and asked if I could sit, eat, sit and eat lunch with her. <laughs>
she'd probably laugh right in my face. And it is hard on a face when it gets laughed in. <sighs> I'm a coward. I'm so much of a coward that you wouldn't even think of looking at me. In fact, I can't remember a moment when she's, when she's ever looked at me. Why shouldn't she look at me? Is she so great and I'm so small that she just can't spare one moment? She's looking at me. She's looking at me. She's looking at me. Lunchtime is among the worst times of day for me. Ugh. If that little redhead girl is looking at me with a stupid bag over my head, she must think I'm the biggest fool alive. But if she isn't looking at me, maybe I could like take it off and she'd never notice. On the other hand, I can't tell if she's looking until she until I take it off. And on the other other hand, it's getting quite hard to breathe in here. Okay, phew, she's not looking at me. I wonder why she never looks at me. Well, lunch hour is over. Only 2,364 to go. Bye. If there's one thing I can't stand in the theater, it's walking out alone at the beginning of an evening to open a show cold. But it's better than waiting tables. I'm Charlie, your waiter for this evening. I'd rather be on stage tonight. Waiting tables is a toy job. You probably don't know what a toy job is. I'll explain. A toy job is a job that you don't really care about that you do while you wait for the chance to get a job you really want. But maybe you know already, being a waiter is sort of a standard job for an actor. It's expected. I mean, if you're a dentist or an insurance salesman, and someone says, where are you working nowadays? And you say, I'm a waiter at this little French place on 56th Street. They think you're a failure. But if you're an actor, they understand. So. Ici, personne n'est pas le français. That's the name of this place. Yeah, well, I didn't get the first time either. It means no one here speaks French. It's really a lunch place. At lunch, they use four waiters. After lunch through dinner, one waiter. We get a few semi-regulars in the evening, and now, between lunch and dinner, nothing. The food's pretty good, French, reasonable. At lunch, you could get a great meal here, of course, for like about three fifty, four bucks. But the price soars if you start ordering little extras, like coffee, of course. She's got to be kidding. It's mid afternoon, three thirty. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Hello, my name is Josia Tambon, and today I will be reading to you Whitish from the Gatu Sabes monologue slam. What else do I want? For all the questions to just stop. I'm sorry. I didn't... I didn't mean to you, I'm sorry. It's just unbearable. As if I had to prove my existence. I'm not a unicorn. Maybe it's all in my head. I'm projecting my insecurities. N no. People are just are easily confused. 
it's always black or white. There isn't any room for gray or rainbows for that matter. But there should be. When will it stop? When will I stop having to explain to people that I, I don't like spicy food? It, no jalapenos, no thank you. Do you, do you think it's weird that I don't want jalapenos? Exactly. Why can't people accept that? As soon as people know that I'm Latin, they're quickly to assume that I like spicy food, but I'm not, I'm not breaking the rules. Am I? It's frustrating. People who don't know I'm of Latin descent also get confused because, or do, do you speak Spanish? I, I had no idea you were Mexican. 20 different countries speak the language. If you call them out, you're too sensitive or ashamed of who you are. It's not... It's not the case, but try and win that argument. No onions, no secret sauce. Could I please have the ketchup on the side? Sorry, I said no ketchup on the side before, but I changed my mind. You're right. I am confusing. Thank you. Hi, my name is Eliana Rodriguez, and I'm going to be performing a monologue from Like Dreaming Backwards by Kelly Powell. I dropped her off that night about a quarter to two. Should have asked her to come over or asked her if anything was wrong, but she seemed normal, not happy exactly, but like herself. I met her freshman year, an introduction to British literature. We made each other laugh. She was bitter and cynical, but still really nice. I knew she had depression but we had fun together, you know? Never really made any sense of that. That night, we saw a play and then went to a midnight movie. I was nodding off through the last half of it gotten up early that morning to go running and I just keep wondering if there was something in the play or in the movie some trigger or some reason something that could set her off you know something I missed but I just keep trying to look for clues, for answers. She had survived so, so much. So, why that night? Thank you. Hi, my name is Stephanie Gomez-Golo and I'll be performing a monologue from the play Bright Beach Memoirs by Neil Simo. Judge you. I can't even talk to you. I don't exist to you. I try so hard to get close to you, but there's never any room. Whatever you had to give went to daddy, and when he died, whatever was left you gave to. I have been jealous my whole life of Lori because she was lucky enough to be born sick. I could never turn a light on at night or read a book in bed because Lori always needed her precious sleep. I could never have a friend over on the weekend because Lori was always resting. I used to pray that I'd get some terrible disease 
or get hit by a car so I'd have all twisted up crippled leg. So maybe just once, just once, I get to crawl in bed next to you and hold you and talk to you on a cold rainy night until I fell asleep in your arms. Just once. Hi, my name is Tyann Blue Majors and I'll be reading for Flower from the play My Secret Hiding Place. I need time to think. Why can't people understand that I need time to myself sometimes? And this new teacher that we have at school is the worst. He doesn't understand what's going on with me at all. Okay, I'm not like other children. I know that. He expects me to live up to this stupid name my parents gave me, Flower. They all think it must be the most delicate girl in the world with a slender, delicate face, ruby red cheeks, rosy high cheekbones, clean, clear eyes with lashes till next Tuesday and a slender body with a waist that would snap if anyone squeezed it too hard. Well, I have braces, fat cheeks, bloodshot eyes, boring lashes, and I love to eat. Gifted is such a stupid word. It's not a gift to be so smart. It's a curse. And maybe it wouldn't be so bad if my stupid teacher didn't keep calling my dad and letting him know every new thing that astonishes him about me. It only makes my dad hate me even more. I can't help it if my dad is so insecure about his lack of education that he feels I'm a threat to him. Stupid man. Oh God, dad is still here. Why hasn't he gone yet? Something must be wrong. Maybe he's on to me, but I'm positive he didn't hear me come back this morning. I can't let him find me here. <sighs> okay, I'll just have to be very quiet until he decides to leave. It's starting to get really warm behind this furnace. I really wish I can go out there and confront dad and not be afraid to face whatever he has to dish out. But right now, that doesn't seem like too much fun. I've had enough trouble for one day. I think I'll just stay put right here right here where it's warm. Watch the door. Watch the door. Not after running after that naked guy for him, helping him take care of his latest quest for revenge, right? All he wants me to do is watch the damn door! You know this invisible ink stuff? You know what somebody wrote on the invisible ink that I cannot see? Here's the message. Let me be your slave. <laughs> Is there a summer army, right? <laughs> because these people certainly treat me like that. And what do I say? I say, sure, watch the door. I'm on it. Feed the cat, tend to four. Pull the pin out of the grenade and sit on it for a while. I love to. I'd say, one of these days, watch your own damn door. Have said, but I never do. I missed the whole fight because I'm such a wimp, right? I'm watching that door there, thinking one of these days. Listen, don't tell anybody, okay? There, there never was any teacher. I just, I, 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 just, I, I said that was because, well, because I'm watching that door and I don't have any power in this world. I'm going to invent the teacher and I'm going to send everybody running just so I could do something. Something. 
And now I feel like an idiot. When I, when I become 30 years old, my boss tells me I have to work another weekend, the third one in the month, even though nobody in the company has ever worked more than one week in a month. I never say no, right? I roll over for everybody and everything. By the time I am 38 years old and I worked in the same rotten job for seven and a half years, I would have saved enough money to say to my boss when he asked me, Hey Peter, I need you to work on the weekends. I'm gonna tell him, nope, can't. That would be the sweetest words I have ever said. And look on that fat jerk boss's face will be the sweetest look I have ever seen. And then I'll tell him, and by the way, I'm not coming in tomorrow. And I walk out that door will be the sweetest walk I've ever take. Hi, I'm Alexandra Leonardo, and today I will be doing Dixie's monologue from The Most Curious Phenomenon. What do you mean I can't go out with Johnny tonight? Why not? What do you mean I have been spending too much time with him? Are you crazy? I haven't been spending enough time with him. Don't you understand that I love him? You don't even know what love is. I know what you think. You think this is some little flank. Puppy love. An infatuation. That's what I heard you tell Ms. Ricker at the grocery store. All you do is talk behind my back. But I know, I know. You can't keep me away from Johnny. He is the one thing that matters in my life. I'll run away. I'll, I'll kill myself. If you don't let me see him, I'll jump off a bridge. <laughs> you think I'm kidding, but I am not. My life isn't worth living without Johnny. You don't understand. Don't try to tell me you understand. If you understood, you wouldn't try to keep me away from the one true thing in my life. The one true love in my life. Me and Johnny are meant to be together. We have to be together. I need him. I won't survive without him. I won't have to clean my room or uphold my family obligations. All this crap you've been telling me. I don't need to eat or drink or sleep. I just need Johnny. I need him. I need him. You don't understand me. One tiny bit. Friendly! Wait a minute, Joe. You take those heaters away from you for nothing. You know that? Nothing. You take away the good good to the kickbacks and the shakedown arrows and the pistol, then you're nothing. 
your guts and your wallet and your trigger finger, you know that? Maybe from where you're standing, but I'm standing over here now. All those years I've been ratting on myself, and I didn't even know it. You give it to Joey, you give it to, you give it to Dugan, you give it to Charlie. It's one of your own. You think you're God Almighty, but do you know what you really are? You're a cheap, a lousy, dirty, stinking mug. I'm right there, yeah. You hear that? I'm glad what I've done. Hi, my name is Elsie Front, and I will be doing a monologue from the play The Audition by Don Zalitis. Okay. My life. Terry. My life is the most wonderful thing. My life is the... When I was 10 years old, I got cast in the school play. We were doing this play our teacher wrote about Winnie the Pooh. I was Tigger, probably because I was pretty hyper. I even got to sing a song about Tiggers. I was so excited, I stayed after school every day and I learned my lines in the first week and every night at home, I'd sing my song about Tiggers and how they were made out of rubber and everything. Our school didn't have a lot of money, but my friend's mom made me a costume and we had a lot of fun. And I felt really good about it. I mean, I felt, amazing. It was like my whole life. I was looking for something I was good at. And then all of a sudden, here it was. I was good at being Tigger. I couldn't run fast. I wasn't good at math. I couldn't even spell. But when I sang that Tigger song, I was proud. So the day of the show came and I was backstage in my Tigger costume and I was really nervous. I had to pee like every five minutes. And then I went out there on stage. And the lights were really bright. I could see the outline of all these heads out there and I could hear them and I did my song. And I just put everything I had into it and I wasn't nervous anymore. I was happy and when I finished, the whole audience applauded for me. For me. I had never been applauded for anything my whole life. And then, after the show, all the parents were coming up and hugging their kids, even the kids who played trees. I remember this dad came up and he was like, you were the most realistic tree out of all of them. And everyone was there. And everyone was getting hugged. And there are all these flowers. And I looked around for my mom. And I looked around for her. And I kept looking. And then everyone started to go home. And I was still there. And I was still in that stupid Tigger costume. I asked her later why she didn't come to my show and she said, what show? I was really good, too. Hi, my name is Soraya Seely, and I'll be performing. You know I died for 15 seconds, right? From Mean Girls the Musical. I'm... I'm, I'm gonna forgive you, and... Because I'm on a lot of pain medication right now and when I woke up in the street all I could see was my mom's face and Gretchen's big face looking down at me and they were just surprised like not even sad just surprised that I could be bleeding Like they forgot I was a human being. I've actually been a human this whole time. I know I was harsh and people say I'm a bitch, but you know what they would have called me if I were a boy? Reginald.
that's what my mom would have named me if I were a boy. So honestly, I'd rather be a bitch. <laughs>
girl you got tonight? I don't got to marry you, nothing. Oh, we got that something special between us. A special something nothing. Uh, I told you that this Tosha is a woman of the movement, and you, Ruffy, you were part of the stagnation. Tosha illegally binding her womanhood into the stagnation. Well, then, I'll be getting on my knees so you say yes. You're going to be kneeling your whole life. Got a good job. I'm going to buy you a house in the Rolling Hills. I'm a woman of the movement. The Rolling Hills ain't part of the movement, far as I can tell. Bow it to the people. You don't mean it. Bow it to the people. You just want to get with me. Power to the people. Shit. We made our entrance into the area. That's a roger by my coordinates. Check, check, and a double roger on this end, check. Roger, triple check. We are here. Secure the perimeter. Secure. Secure, secure, roger. Triple secure, triple roger, over. Hold on a sec. Enemy? Negative. Looks like shit. Looks like shit? Looks like a pair of wings. Bird wings. A big bird. Not the big bird, but a big bird. Wipe down for explosives. You never know. They've got some sort of harness on them. Like they're for wearing. Stay clear. Could be dangerous. They're wings. I'm gonna try them on. Give me a hand. Stay clear, I'm telling you. Stay clear. Here? I outrank you. Help me get them on. They fit. But they was made for you. What were they made for, you think? Wings are made for flying. Are we there yet? Not yet. I'm tired. You tired? Yes, it's hot. Are we there yet? <sighs> yes. But you're still walking. Because there's more walking to do, sir. <sighs> Want some soup? What is it? Turtle soup. Sounds good. Turtles? They're still alive? Jesus Christ. I couldn't make fire, no wood, no coal, no paper, no sticks, no stones, no matches, no knife, no nothing. Damn this war. Yeah.
Good thing that it's over, right? I mean, almost over. Groundhog Day. Today, Groundhog, relating the Groundhog play, walks out. And should they see their shadow? It means lots more winter is on its way. No shadow, no winter. So it's over. Winter, most of it anyway. Winter this year was hard. You know, there's the, ow! And if none of that got to you, or you know, even with the bright spots, there's the, so much difficult even more difficult to talk about. But it's over. Winter is over. Which is finally over. So finally, we can just be here. At last, we can finally just be here without our galoshes. Every day I run to the window to see if my tulips are coming up. And soon, spring green will be here. There's nothing better than that. You're just the shadow. You're not my shadow, right? <clears throat> Sorry I'm late. You were walking so fast, and uh, I was out pretty late last night, and uh, I was drinking okay, I'll admit it. Even though my wife tells me if I keep drinking, it'll kill me. But, so I was out late last night, and uh, I was having a pretty good time, so I went to bed, set my alarm, and uh, the alarm went off, and I was dead to the world. Out cold. By the time I got myself together, you, you were all the way down the street. I heard hollering. That was me. <coughs> hollering for you to wait up. The last time I saw you, you were a bit smaller. I've been eating too much. Gaining weight. A little embarrassing. I'll say. So, uh, you see me, right? You're just a shadow. You're not my shadow. Come on. Come on. I'm not going back in. This is hard for me, too. It's burning. Mm. Why didn't you tell me? You didn't smell it? My cold. I forgot. You think it'll burn to the ground? God willing. I'm trying pretty hard to put it out. And then we'll have the ruin of it to look at. It'll suck. Burn! Burn! <laughs> Joe? How'd you know? Your name tag. Oh. Delivery. For me? Yeah, here. Sign. You sure? 
See Joe, see this Van Gogh? My orders, go give this Van Gogh to Joe. This is Van Gogh. Now you know. I think a rhyme thing we have going on, but this is an actual Van Gogh signed in everything. What? Sign here for delivery. It's my lucky day. Tell me or something. Sorry, but I got other deliveries. It's back on me, yeah, pink violets and sunshine roses. Get from God, Van Gogh says, lucky, 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 hey. Impressive. I was moved. Me too. What do you think it means? Uh, I think it's supposed to be the creation. Of what? Of the world, I guess. Big Bang and all that. Wow. Yeah. What about the cosmos? Who knows? Like, Big Bang produced the world. That's easy to understand. Some stuff blew up, made more stuff. That's simple, but... But what? What made all the stuff, all the stuff that was swirling around in the first place? I don't like to think of all that stuff. I do. I don't. More. Enough. More. see? Water. Good. What else? Waves. What's making the waves? 
My dad. Your dad? He's ill. Today's his birthday. Happy birthday, dad. God bless you. Um, yeah, dad's making the waves. No, God bless him. The water is making the waves, I think. Almost. The water, but more than the water. Good. You see, the everything makes the waves. No, we cannot see everything. We can see the water as it is a part of the everything that we can see. And though uh, you may try to fight the everything, it's best not to. It's best not to waste your time and energy trying to fight it because in the end, you will lose. So just go with it. Yes. Yes. Where were you? The wars. And then? Lost. Oh. So, where are the children? Grown up and moved away. <laughs> oh. This is me. Here I am. I'm the president of the United States of America, lowercase p for president, because I'm not acting in the full capacity right now. I'm not acting. I'm just being. I'm just being me. I'm just being me being here. I'm just being here with my puppets. And I'm good. And everywhere I go, I look. Oh, here's the bad guy. Boom, boom, zing. Oh, there, he's dead. And the bad guy's henchmen. Boom, boom, they're dead. And I'm the champ. Yeah, I'm the champ. I've heard people say that too much of anything is not good for you, baby. But I don't know about that. As many times as we've loved and we've shared love and made love, it's, it doesn't seem to me like it's enough. It's just not enough, baby. It's just not enough. Yes, sir. So I'm the mourner and you're the world. Yes, I'm the world and you're the mourner. Right. What you doing? Turning. Right. 
very loud. Stop. No. So please, just for one second, Barry White was. You know who Barry White was? All the world's indeed a project, and you or me are deep, deep in it. We come, we go, we come, we go, trying to know a little more than we come in the room with. When I was a kid, this kid across the hall told me I didn't have a father because hell, she ain't never seen him. How could I not, as a child of my mother and as a child of the world, not have a dad? This didn't make no kind of sense to her, so she took it upon herself to kick my ass once a week like clockwork because... She had never seen her father, and her mother told her she was her mother's sole creation, that her mother had made her solo. Pick one. He'll be your dad. Yeah? We'll call him up, and he'll come over, I guess. Some don't come over. Where is he that? Don't be nuts. You call them up, you pay them, they'll come over. After work or whatever. And they'll bring you things, candies, dolls, and a pony for your birthday. And flowers for you. I guess. And for your, what do you call it? Your anniversary. He'll bring you, um. Shut up. Pick one, just pick one. I, I can't decide. Close your eyes, offload the pages, and spin the book, and you pick. <laughs> Now pick. This one. Hmm. Hmm. Here comes Addy. burden of history is coming back again, walking up and down my streets in the shape of a man. Oh no. What you gonna do? This town ain't big enough for him and you. The burden of history in on the mean train got his meanness for his passage. He knows my slave name. Oh no. Where are you gonna go? That you don't even own. Your own house no more. Burden of his tree calls me up, calls me down. Put your best dress on, girl. We gonna go paint the town. Oh, no. Stay with one, you know? Don't need to go scratch up nobody's floor. The burden of his tree is laying in my bed. His feet way over the edge. I'm pillowing his head. Oh, no. We've seen this game before. Send him out your house, girl. Because you don't know what's in store. Burden of history. He's walking on down the road. Got his baby in my belly, and he's got nice, nice, nice clothes. Oh, no. Better close your door. Close your book on him, girl. He won't come back no more. The burden of history. He's coming back again, walking up and down my streets in the shape of a man.
Easy. 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 All I can say is thank you. Is that my line? Yes. Do you like it? All I can say is thank you. You like it? Yes, very much. What else do I say? That's all. That's all. You don't like me. You don't think I'm worthy. I gain weight. He's gained weight, you're thinking. It, it's not. All I can say is thank you. I would like to say more than that. Perhaps a list of those I like to think. A long list. I'd be so grateful. And at the end of the list, of course, I would like to thank the writer. It's very sweet. It's a keeper then. No, just that one sentence. If you don't have anything else for me to say, then I quit. You know, some days I'm alive for no reason. But I'm alive that day just the same. Can I say it? That's very good. Y yeah, yes. Uh, yes, you can say it. May I add a gesture? Go for it. And a little something in the middle there. How about silence? Fine. What about my costume? Come as you are. Thank you. Don't mention it. I married my wife on the day of the eclipse. Our friends awarded her courage with gifts. Now the nights grow longer and the season shifts. I look to my sorrowful wife. How are you doing? I'm looking up at the stars. You want to get me written up? I just wanted to stand in our yard and look up at something. It's not our, it's not our, our yard. Not anymore. Inside? No. I'm inside! I'm inside, or I'll get me away from Will. <laughs> Thank you.
are you? I'm the monster. Of? Prosperity. The monster of prosperity? Yes. But you're so... Monstrous. Bingo. Well, what can I tell you? One, two, three, four. Obstacles, transcriber of the Vedas. Sufficient says I should have done it first. My bad. Um, I spaced out and, and didn't see you. Even though there, there you are, sitting in the middle of the room. And how could I have missed you, shining so brightly as you do, the son of sun? Burn, baby, burn, and light up my life. I wouldn't mind if you send the house up in smoke. I wouldn't mind if everything I've purchased goes. Just mind over matter. I don't mind if it don't matter. Here's a thick brick. Let me crack it. Here is a traffic snarl on a nearby highway. Let me soothe it. Here's an atom. Let me split it. Here are seven conflicts in seven war-torn countries. Let me piece them back together. Dear one, dear one, I've been spent hours looking for this place called the center. Like, I was driving up and down the streets with a plastic mat. Go ahead and laugh. I'm, I'm laughing too. The first time I ever saw you, fat boy with the elephant head resting in the arms of your mother. I knew you would be my pal, and I, I didn't know your name yet. Help me see the obstacles as opportunities. They call artists creators. I, I know I'm just a gardener. Let me sit at your feet and grow your flowers. Let me help you smile. <laughs> <laughs> 